Do you believe that even talking about our penises and our vaginas as wee-wees and bottoms has an effect on how a society holds something that is absolutely natural to the human? I'm extremely, extremely uh, excited to have this conversation in this chat and my ask of each of you that you share your own feelings and comments and also share this video. I think that whenever we talk about sex or whenever I do a video about sexual repression or anything like that, it gets less shares because everybody's afraid to talk about the thing that is absolutely natural to each and every one of us. And so I challenge you to get past the ego concept that has you afraid to share because your cousin or your auntie or your mom who's also on Facebook may uh, see that and feel a certain type of way, right? Because that in essence is you repressing your own truth truth, denying your own truth if it aligns with you. I challenge each and every one of you if this inspires you or teaches you something that you maybe didn't even think about, that you share it and not be afraid because the word genitals are in the title, okay? <laughs> Game on. You know, I've been thinking a lot about this particular topic and I did a podcast earlier today and I was explaining that, you know, the two areas that most people hide from or have so much shame or trauma or repression or just yuckiness around is sex and money. Money, we have no, some people have issues with and we believe certain things about money based on our parents and what they said about rich people and wealthy people and all of that stuff. However, we still praise people with money. We still chase money. While sex is this taboo sort of thing that is hidden behind closed doors and everybody's afraid of it. And, but also everybody's doing it because it's freaking natural and comes with the human. And so I thought it's, it's really important to have this conversation about what happened when you found your genitals, what happened? How did your family hold that? How did your mom or dad or caretaker, grandmother, whoever it was, how did they hold that? Because I'm gonna give you an example or a story. I'm gonna make up this story, but this is probably true for quite a few people of a little boy and a little girl, brother and sister. Let's call them Jason and Chrissy are in the bathtub. Let's say that Jason is seven, Chrissy's six and they're in the bathtub together or whatever that's happening and Jason's penis gets hard or he notices it or whatever. And his parents, his mother freaks out, father freaks out, smacks his hand, don't touch that and we don't touch each other. And there's this whole thing around how they are being with something that is absolutely natural. Now my question to you is do you believe that that would cause a trauma? Do you believe that even talking about our penises and our vaginas as wee-wees and bottoms has an effect on how a society holds something that is absolutely natural to the human? Do you believe, and these are just questions at this point, and you can leave a comment and I'll read your comments to the best of my ability. Do you believe that us as parents or your parents not addressing that you have a vagina or that you have a penis and that you'll have these urges to copulate, to merge with someone else, to discover your own sexuality at around eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and the rest of your freaking life. I cannot tell you how many people we support in Bridge, in Man Cave, in a Stretch 22, who were shamed, who were made to feel wrong about their exploration and figuring out how things worked. I cannot tell you how many people I know whose first sexual experience was with a family member. And yet every one of those people who got caught was spanked or punished or made to feel wrong. And when we do that, when we, when we shame our kids, it leads to embarrassment, repression, and those things lead to inhibition and dysfunction and sexual violence. I'm gonna tell you, if you haven't noticed, there is a whole generation that is being raised by pornography, by what the music industry says sex should and should not be. There's a whole generation that are asking people to choke them because they saw it in a porn. Because our parents have been too afraid to face off with that which has always been there. And so even just notice, right? Notice how many comments aren't on here because we're talking about something so damn real. And it's okay, I get it guys, I'm that guy. I'm gonna fucking talk about the stuff we're all afraid of. I think that it's important that we have these conversations. I think it's important that we call them penises, that we 
<laughs> when our child, when their dick gets hard, that we don't shame them for touching it, for exploring it, for, for attempting to see what that thing does. I think so many people have experienced so many traumas around sex that it's, it's just mind blowing. And, and I think that that's where the work is in owning those aspects of ourselves in leaning in to what it means to be a sexual being. Where have I not been willing to go and how is that affecting the rest of my life? You know, we, we understand at this point that there are five core emotions, five core emotions, fear, sadness, AKA grief, joy, sexual feelings, and anger. And imagine that our, our emotions come out like, like a water hose, you know, attached to a spigot. And so if the hose is attached and the water's turned on, the water's just flowing, 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 flowing. But when we uh, repress or deny or turn our backs on a certain emotion, that means it comes with the fucking human. When we turn our back on one of those, it's like kinking the hose. What happens when you fold a hose, right? The water may still trickle, but it doesn't come out as powerfully. It doesn't flow. And so not only do when we, when we fold the holes, do we, do, we, do we stop the flow of our sexual energy, but we also step, stop the flow of our joy. For each and every one of us to lean in, to tap in, to ask ourselves, where have I not been willing to go? What have I disowned or turned my back on? And nine out of 10, you will find that it is in that conversation. If you really think back and look back to how sex was treated in your household. You know, we tell kids and type yes if you remember this. They had like sex education class. And in that class, they would show you herpes and syphilis and all of these things. And they would tell you that this little girl was 13 and she got pregnant and you're gonna get pregnant too if you have sex. And so sex is what? What are we saying about sex? If I'm showing you diseases and, and making you believe a certain thing, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm programming and conditioning you, what am I trying to tell you about sex? The thing that naturally happens in the body. What am I trying to tell you about it? I'm trying to tell you it's bad. I'm trying to tell you that which is natural to the human is a bad thing. Ooh, rah, like, bro. <laughs> this is like, like for real. We have so much sexual violence that is happening on the planet right now. And you know, it's easy to point and say it's men or it's this or it's that. And I really want us all to just go, where am I? Where have I not been willing to go? Why is the, the cheating and the like all of that so like we glorify certain things in film, in television, we glorify certain things. You know, we'll make 10,000 Hitler movies. We'll show, we'll have P Saving Private Ryan, Saving Private whoever. We'll have every war movie, Rocco, Rocky, Terminator. We'll have everything that we can possibly have in war and killing and violence and Oceans 13 and Oceans 758 and Fight Club and everything else. But what we won't show is the beauty and the magic that is the sacred dance called sex and sexuality. Sexuality is tied to our passion. It is tied to our creativity. It is tied to that which creates life. And yet we kink the holes. We fold the holes and we don't allow it to flow. Now, am I saying that you need to go out and be a raging quote unquote man slut or whatever the case may be? No. And if you want to, yes, please do. We will show people being killed in the battlefields, but we won't show a woman ex like experiencing the fullness of an orgasm. This is why I'm here. I know it's why you're here too. As you guys know, I'm not the most polished, right? I'm not like the PC guy. I'm not the dude who says all the right internet answers so you guys love me more and then, and then you know, I, I blow up, right? And, and you know, a part of me is like, Yo, maybe you should do that so you can get to more people. And then another part of me is like, bro, you cannot, you cannot turn your back on your truth, homie. You got to keep stepping in. You got to keep speaking it. Whoever will he who has ears to hear and eyes to see will receive that. And so as tribe, as family, as someone who maybe resonates with this sexual chocolate drop named P Smiles, please, please look within. Ask yourself, where have I not been willing to go? Sit in this question, lean into it, play with it. Why is it that I have a story about myself being a slut or a hoe? Where'd that come from? You know, one of my favorite quotes, I read this in a book in The Science of Mind. It was Ernest Holmes. He said, get your questions answered and your answers questioned. I'm gonna say it again. Get your questions answered and your answers questioned. So we don't just stop at like, oh, 
that's true. You know, I was having a conversation on a podcast today, you know, saying like something like Asian people can't drive or, or black people are X, Y, and Z, lazy, aggressive, whatever that is. Let's, let's rethink these things. Let's re-question these things. Let's sit in a different space and ask ourselves, what else is here? Because this, this whole world of human, the, the point is to evolve, to level up, to take the involution and then to create an evolution. And that evolution partnered with other people who are evolving becomes a revolution. And this is the game we all get to play with each other. This is the game we all get to play with each other. And we get to play with ourselves if we want to. I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I love you all. I appreciate you all. If this resonated, if you're not afraid to talk about it, if you're not afraid your aunt or your cousin's gonna see this video and think that you maybe like yourself and think sex is okay, and you, you know, your religion doesn't say that you're a sinner or you're bad because you wanna have sex, right? Meanwhile, some people in that religion are raping little boys behind the scenes. Like, bro, come on. And, and here's the thing. Nothing against the Catholic Church or any any other religion, but like, let's think about like what's really happening, right? What you resist persists, what you look at disappears. When we're in the resistance of that which comes with the car, sex, 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 life, beauty, flow. When we're in the resistance to that, then it must persist. But the moment we look at it and allow it, accept it, appreciate it, it no longer has its charge. So I'm asking you, I'm asking me to lean in. Blessings and blessings. I love you all. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I appreciate you. Real talk, real talk, real talk.